Yo, what's good? How's it going? Stuff's been moving along. Well, mostly things have been breaking and I've been fixing stuff. Uh, so I guess let's just kind of get to it. Uh, my CNC broke a little while ago. I was fixing it as of last video. Thought I got close. Other things broke on and after that. Actually, the, one of the motors, there's an issue with it even beyond some of the... Things broke. I fixed it. In the process of fixing it, I broke the uh, some of the, the flood cooling system, so it was causing problems. So I rebuilt all of that, put it back together, and I gotta like jack the mill up. Like it's a whole process, right? I put it in there, turn it back on, and it's running. I'm like, everything's tuned. I'm like, yeah, this is great. Wait, did the pump just stop? Ugh, the pump burned out. I was <laughs> like, ah. So at that point, I just started looking at the thing. And I had like a, an underpowered pump for the rig, and I was like, ah, I guess I need to go buy like a real pump for this, right? I look at it, it's like $400, $600. I'm like, huh, don't have a job right now. Well, I mean, I have a job. It's this. Well, it is making products, right? And not YouTube, really. It's just like I'm on here. It's not like I make money on this. Um, but anyways, long story short, not having current income, I was like, ah. I don't want to buy that. Maybe I'll build one. Right? So I went around doing that. Around doing that. Like it was a dance. I did the hokey pokey and then this came out. That's weird phrasing. Hey, look at this. <laughs> this is a pump. Well, it's part of a pump. So uh, basically I was going to repurpose one of the larger motors I had in my house um, to be able to power uh, a centrifugal pump, which is this thing right here. I designed it, printed it out, uh, got the major bits done. There's a lid for this as well. Um, and then I fixed the other pump. Hey, beggars can't be choosers. But this is a significantly better pump than what I have, um, so I will finish it a little bit later because it will help with the, the cutting. I'll make the mill more efficient. Um, other than that, one of my other 3D printers broke, one of the large ones back there, um, and I had to like take it apart basically and completely rebuild the hot end. And I got it working again, so that's good. Um, some other stuff, minor broke that I had to go fix. Um, in the middle of designing two different electric forges, which will show up in some videos. Maybe not the next one, but if not the next one, then the one after that. Got some bro time with one of my brothers. Um, as mentioned previously in other videos, I tried to make a present for him for Christmas. I did make a present for him for Christmas. It just didn't fully work. And he's another engineer that loves engineering, right? Uh, some engineers do one kind of engineering, and other engineers do all the engineering. And still yet, others really want to do all the other engineering, but... Maybe they have a family or something, right? Um, that's my older brother. He's a great guy, takes care of his family. But um, long story short, he really likes engineering like I do as well, like just multiple things. So he's like, bro, let's finish this together. We hung out, we worked on it, we didn't get it working. Ugh. So uh, I think firstly, that was my fault. Secondly, I think I know what's wrong with it. Uh, so we'll probably see that in an upcoming video, but we can see it trying to work in this video. But wait, before we go, it is a 3D gimbaled gyroscope. So it's a gyroscope and a gimbal mount so you can like spin it around, right? It's got a stand. You put it on the stand and when it's on the stand you can turn on power which will then power the gyroscope because it's got magnets on it, right? The problem we're having or the problem I was having is I couldn't get the motor part of it to work. Like getting the gyroscope to spin wasn't happening. Uh, so let's go see a quick video of it not working. Wow, that was life changing. It's actually kind of cool. Uh, I do like it. My brother seems to like it. I would have liked to have had it finished, but it's still ongoing. And like I said, I think I know what's wrong with it. Uh, the circuit that I chose was incorrect. I didn't fix some things that were not applicable for how I was using it. I don't care. I'll show you some video, maybe in the next uh, video, of like what happened and how I fixed it um, at a high level. I don't think you'll really care about the details. Um, but yeah, that happened. Um, like I said, designing two different forges, trying a few different manufacturing steps with, um, uh, with uh, targeting like aluminum. I'm having some issues, but I'm getting close, so that will show up in a couple of videos from now, so that's nice. Um, and also, uh, I have a, a friend, like a business acquaintance that I've been kind of getting to know, um, and he's been trying to make a product, but he's been having some trouble with the prototype. Um, and I don't know, finally hit me the other day, I was like, you know what, I could totally build that. So I sent him an unsolicited estimate and was like, bro, here's the thing. And uh, I think he'll accept it. I really didn't charge him much for the, the work. Um, but that means it is my first paid prototyping and engineering prototyping and engineering 
gig. Um, I guess that's with a caveat. I mean, I've been a software engineer for some time, and some of that is prototyping, but like physically, like building things. Um, like I said, haven't heard back from him yet. I sent it off. He hasn't seen it yet. So we'll see what he says, but I mean, I, I gave him a real good price. So I don't, I think he'll say yes. Um, that's mostly it, although I do have a little bit of bonus clip. So because I'm running around fixing stuff, you know, testing manufacturing processes, which are usually like trade secrets, and I've, you know, I've kind of put tens of thousands of dollars into this in lots of hours, so, eh. um, I don't have as much, like, on-the-job footage, but I do have this little bonus footage for you. Apologies for the background lighting, it kind of screws with the camera a bit, um, but I don't really want to move these tanks around because I kind of take care of them. But, uh, yeah, as a kid, did you ever really like sea monkeys? And think to yourself, I should have more sea monkeys. <laughs> um, so I had seen someone try to make uh, a self-sustaining ecosystem, like a little biosphere for uh, sea monkeys. And about a year ago, actually a little bit more, I went and tried that. And I've had some success. Some of the tanks have kind of died off, and I want to go back and you know help them out as needed. Like some of these guys here. This one is completely closed. The tops here have a little bit of room. Um, this one died off, which kind of sucks, but I can I should be able to revive it. I've done that for other tanks in the past. Um, and these down here on the bottom actually have done very well. Um, I'm really happy with them. It's cool. It feels like a little space colony, at least to me. Um, but I thought it was pretty neat, and I figured y'all would also think it's neat. So enjoy. I'll be damned. Fish in a jar. Wait. Fish in a jar? Sea monkeys in a Hey, look, a terrarium thing that's underwater. I, I don't know how to English or language sometimes, but I thought it was kind of neat. I think you'll, or some of you'll probably think it's neat. Um, anyways, as it is, I still have a few things that need to get built today, so I'm going to get to that. It's been good hanging, but peace. I'll see you next week.